I mean, the design approach started, um, it's really evolved from the um, late 90s when I would design gear with my dad, who was a master design engineer. Um, and I'm just a basic studio engineer at the time. We wanted an amplifier that um, allowed us to manipulate it by pushing on it or not pushing on it. Being able to manip manipulate the tubes was critically important. Um, I wanted to be able to have control over much more of the harmonic content than you typically do with, with an amplifier that um, simply has a, a level control. You know, it does a simple function, right? I mean, we're just taking a microphone level, turning it into a, a line level, but it's at the front end also, so there's an opportunity to um, really impart and, and sort of capture some of the qualities in a, in a really good um, analog, pure analog path topology. So, um, but the overall design philosophy to me also has to include the visual cosmetics. It has to have a visual appeal. Um, it has to be built stout, built wonderfully, last forever, and sound good. Those are the three things that are, that are important to me. Um, so we sort of, if you can tell, took a kind of old school mixed with a little sophistication of a newer sort of a red look. Uh, we got the toggle switches, we got the VU meters. There's a little bit of analog there mixed with a little bit of, of uh, maybe updated, sophisticated look, uh, wrapped in a pure, fully balanced differential amplifier with eight vacuum tubes for stereo signal. I think we've struck a good balance between being very versatile and very traditional at the same time. Um, we're versatile without being complicated. So when you buy a La Chapelle, and it's true for the 500 series, it's true with the 983 and the, and the, the 992, uh, your ability to have complete control over the harmonic content that comes from the amplifier stage, um, and thus more color, more distortion, pleasing distortion, um, or if you want to lean on the output stage, have a very clean, very neutral, transparent um, amplifier, that, that's that's really important and it's not complicated. They simply dial in more input gain to drive the tubes uh, or they back that off and, and favor the output stage for a much more clear transparent sound. I, I mean it's, it's really amazing. A lot of uh, I've learned so much and I had my preconceived ideas my, and my, sort of my categorized um, uh, impressions of, of the various 12x7s that are out there and there are so many. It's, the variants are incredible. Um, you got them from Europe, USA, East Germany, and Britain. So it, it really is, though, uh, one of those things. It's not a giant contrast, but it is, it, it's, it's a lot more than subtle going between the tubes. Um, uh, people will tell you, though, that they, they, the real payoff is in the mix. They'll hear a subtlety between a Telefunken or a Mollard or a Black Plate Raytheon. Um, some people will choose a Telefunken for female vocal only. And that happens more in the 583 where they have access to the tube quickly. Um, some people will not record drum overheads on a 992 without it being, uh, without a, a full molar complement. Uh, it just sounds good and it, it really pays off in the mix. But I find that it's, it's mostly the tube guys that, that already have that idea. Some people will ask me and I'll give them a general direction. Some of my favorites built mini watts, you know, the box plate molar, uh, Telefunken certainly. Uh, but, you know, it really does pay off when you, when you spend the time tailoring that and then in the mix you realize it's sitting so much better when I've, when I've crafted that match.